Hi, and welcome to Apple Cottage. This is Sandy, and today I'm making some really fun pot holders with puppy dogs on them. So um, it's an easy step-by-step, -step, no binding, and so I just wanted to show you how I do them. I want to cut two eight by eight pieces of all natural batting. And that's going to go into my center. On the top of this one, I have these cute, fun puppy dogs, golden retrievers. And that's going to go there. Now on the back side of this one, I have a lot of different patterns of material that I'm matching. It's just this gray. And so that's going to lay face down. I'm going to set first my two pieces of natural batting then my top piece and I am going to center it and then I'm going to pin that in because what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to free motion on top of here then I'll be folding these I'll show you how to do the corners I'll be folding these um, a quarter of an inch and then folding them to again to make the edge and that makes it so there's a no binding and so that's real easy if you have trouble with binding adding bindings onto your um, projects and I'm going to go through and I'm going to get all of mine ready then I'm going to show you the whole stack of them that I have um, then we have the process of pinning them then doing the edges and so we're just going to go step by step and so it's an easy fun fast project because at Christmas time, there are always so many people that you'd like to give a little gift. They drop off cookies to you. You're invited to um, go to a Christmas party. And just having a little special gift, I think is important to um, give your hostess. So I will be back after I get all of these put together and I'll show you my whole stack. And then I'm gonna do the process of pinning them on. I have all 18 of my pot holders cut out now. And I tried to make it so that um, they had coordinating fabrics together so that I could sell them in sets or give them away as sets. And so I'm just gonna move the camera so you can see some of them. Now, this one, it has the fun um, puppy dog fabric on there and in fact, Every one of my pot holders that I'm doing today is in some way using this fabric. And so I have the eight inch square of the top fabric. Then I have two of the all natural battings. And then I have a 10 inch square, which is actually gonna be my back. And so I use this fun paisley on this one and I think when I wrap it around, it's going to be really cute on the um, pot holder. But I wanted to make them coordinate. So with this one with the small square with the puppy dogs, the one that will coordinate with it will have paisley in the front and the puppy dogs on the back. And I think that will just be a fun um, combination. And so I want to be able to give a few of these pot holders to the Fur Foundation. The Fur Foundation in Gillette, Wyoming is a great organization that um, anybody across the country can help. They do lots of fundraisers all year round and what it is for is for when people in our community cannot afford to have um, say surgery with their dog, um, shots with their dogs, um, they can come to the Fur Foundation and they will help them pay for part of it or all of it all of it just depend on their income and I think it's a wonderful foundation and so some of these are going to go to them I'm also going to give some of them away for gifts of course and then if I have any left um, I'll have them at my two craft fairs that I have before Christmas but I just wanted to show you some of the fun fabrics that I'm using I like to use um, coordinating colors and so with this one, the puppy dogs are in the center and on the back is a fun gray pattern. Um, I also did 
some with a, a blue pattern. It's very outdoorsy. Puppies love outside, so I thought that was great. And then my other one that I'm using is um, with stars and moons. And I thought that would be a fun one. So some of these will have this fabric on the back. Some of them will have the, this fabric on the front so that they become coordinating. And so I just think that will be um, a great set to either give away or to sell at the markets. And so what I'm going to do is um, go through every one. If anything needs a little touch of ironing before I pin them together, that's what I'll do. And so I'm going to um, do that. I'm going to come back. I'll show you how I pin them. And then, of course, I'm, I, I'm going to do some free motion on there because I love free motion. And so um, I'll show you the step by step to do this. But this is such a fun project because it doesn't have a binding. And I'm going to show you how we're going to um, turn those over and do the corners. And because I know that bindings can be a real problem with, with some people. And this is just an easy way to do it. And it's quick and you can do a lot of them in a little bit of time. And you'll have, um, it's great to, for Christmas gifts. Everybody always needs pot holders, um, either inside or when they're outside grilling. And so I will be back in a second. So I'm putting them together. So I want to put my 10 inch square down first and you make sure that the good side of the fabric, the fabric pattern is on facing downward. Then I'm going to take, and this is a 10 inch piece, then I'm going to take two 8 inch squares of all natural batting and I'm going to just center those onto my 10 inch piece. Then I'm going to take my top piece and lay that right on there. Then I'm going to take four pins because I want everything to stay in place. And I'll look and I'll make sure that it looks nice and centered for me. And I'll start pinning those on. Now, I have seen videos of people doing things these potholders similar to how I do it. But because I love free motion so much and I don't don't want just um, just stripes or squares. I want to have designs. I want to be able to write words if I want to. Um, and so I do my process a little bit different. So once I have that on there, it's all secure. And instead of doing my free motion first, I'm actually going to do my sides first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to make quarter inches right here. But I have to do the, the corners because I want them not to be bulky. And so what I do is I use a ruler and I'm going to have to turn that a little bit because my space is limited. And on here you can see the marks where it's an inch and half inch. And so what I want to do is right at this very corner, I want to go my, my where it has a half of an inch. And I want to make sure that I'm going corner to corner so it's everything is straight. So I'm going to put that right at my half inch mark. And I'm going to just take my rotary cut cutter and cut that off. And I'll do that with all four corners. That way, when I do my quarter inch turn over, and I'm going to make sure I use my iron, not just finger press it. I'll do that. And then I can go over top here. And I can do the stitching. And I'll show you as we go along after I get everything, all the corners cut, everything ironed. Um, and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to stitch. And I'll show you that on the sewing machine too.
the pot holder is all pinned. I've cut the corners of all the pot holders. And now our next step is to turn these corners over an iron. Now I just want to go barely past the corner. And this will make it so that there isn't any edges that aren't stitched. So just a quick cover of the iron, just barely covering, just barely covering the tip. Then we're going to turn in about a quarter of an inch. So we're just going to fold that over. and iron it down. Finger pressing just won't work with this part of it. And so that way we can turn it over and place our pins in it. So I'm going to do that and I'll stop the camera for a second, turn it back on after I have it pinned. So it's all pinned and it's time to turn. So then I'm going to once again do a quarter of an inch, iron it down, and when I fold this over, I want to pull it tight enough so that it matches my other corner. And I'm going to put a pin in there so you can see it. I do it this way because I don't want to have to pin aside sew, pin aside sew, pin aside sew. And so I, I want it to be fast and efficient, easy. So I'm just pinning that side. And then we turn it again. And we always want to cover the material that we just turned. So when we get to this corner, we're going to iron it, we're going to fold it over. We want to make sure when we fold it over that this little flap doesn't come up. We always want it covering our corner. So we're going to iron that down about a quarter of an inch. And that way, when we go to fold it over, we can line up these two corners so they're sharp. So then I'm just going to put a pin in there. And then we're going to pin the side. And we do that to all four sides so that when we get done, it should look like this. We still have our safety pins in the center because we haven't free motioned. Um, we have pins in the corner so that um, one side is always overlapping the other side. And so then I will take it to the sewing machine and I'll go stitch right along this edge all the way down. Then I can take the pins out and I can start the free motion process. Um, on the back side, it just looks flat, but when we stitch, we'll have a seam all the way around. So you, you want to pick threads that match the color of your back so that that isn't a focal point. So I'm going to use a gray, and then when I go to do my free motion, I'm actually going to go not only in the center, but I'll go over the tops, over the corners, so that... Um, Everything is even more secure and it all looks cohesive. I'm ready at the sewing machine. I have everything pinned. All of my corners are pinned along the edges. So I'm ready to sew. Now when I do this, I want to use um, thread that's in, um, in my sewing machine, both with the bobbin and the regular thread that match this back material because I don't want that to be the accent. I want when I free motion in a little bit, I want that to be 
what is more striking. And so I want the color that I'm doing the stitching on just to kind of fade into the background. And it doesn't really matter where you start. Um, I like to start almost to the end of one corner. I want it to be, I want to sew it as close to the edge as possible. And so depending on your sewing machine, you should be able to adjust so that it goes farther over. So I'm adjusting mine all actually all the way over to zero because when I do that, I can line the edge of my foot with the edge of the pot holder. And so that just works real well for me. And I'll put it on, I'll just do a couple back stitches so that it secures it. And I also have my stitch length to the longest possible on my sewing machine, which is a 5.0. And so I'm just going to go right into the corner and then I'm going to pivot. And then I can just slowly go down, watching that I'm always right on the edge. And remember, I have a matching gray color because I don't really want that to be a focal point. Pivoting. Oh, I need one more stitch. Let me do that. Pivoting and going right along my edges. Now, when I get to this next corner, I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to just stitch along here. Now, when I get to the corner, it's where the two pieces have overlapped. Now, if I wasn't doing free motion all the way over to the edges, I would actually stitch on this corner up and down so that secured the fabric to the pot holder. But because I am going to um, free motion all the way to the edges, all the way to the corners, I don't need to do that. So I'm pivoting one more time. As you can see, it's really a quick way, especially if you have trouble with um, doing bindings. And I know a lot of times when people first start sewing, binding is something that they um, don't like to do. Um, but it's really more of a practice. You just have to practice. And there's some special foots you can get for your sewing machine that will help with that. Okay, so I'm just going down and we're about to meet where we started. And when I do that, I'm just going to do a, just a couple quick um, stitches back and then I'm done. And so as you can see, it's stitched all the way around the back, even along the front. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm taking out the pins. I still have my safety pins in there because I'm going to free motion. Now, because free motion uses a different foot on my sewing machine, I am actually going to stitch the, these edges on all 18 of my pot holders before I change it. But you won't see that. You'll just see it that when I'm back and I'm going to free motion. But I'll trim the, the little threads. And then when I go to free motion, I have to choose a fabric that will look, or a thread that will look good on the top here and a thread in the bobbin that will look good here. And so usually when I'm free motioning on, on my wall hangings and things, um, I just use white thread on the bottom, but I don't want to use white thread when like on this one, it's gray. So in my bobbin thread, it will be gray. This one, I think I might do a silver or a variegated blue. And so when I get all of them with their edges all done, then we'll be back to free motion. All the um, seams are sewn all the way around, all the edges. And so I have changed my thread. My top thread, I'm actually going to use a variegated, um, it's got browns and golds in it. And I think it will draw these golds that are on the back and the browns um, 
onto the front and I think it will just blend it really well. Now I've put my um, free motion foot on. I'm lowering my feed dogs. Mine is just underneath. Um, and then I always put a piece of material with some batting on it just to do a test. I've um, put my needle back into the center. I've adjusted the the length of my stitch to as low as it'll go on minus 0.8 and I'm just going to test to make sure everything is okay. So I look on the top and I look on the bottom. Now that made some weird stitches so I'm going to try it one more time. If it doesn't work I'm going to re-thread, I'm going to take the bobbin out and redo it again. So let's try it one more time. Now that seems to be stitching better. And that's okay. So um, I'm ready to free motion onto my first um, pot holder. When I free motion, I always wear my gloves. They have these little BB texture things on here. It makes them very easy to move. And the fun thing about free motion is that I can write words. So I could write dog on here, or I love my dog, or anything like that, or I can just do designs. And um, I like to start on one edge. I still have the pins in, but I'll move them as I start to stitch. So I start on one edge, put my foot down, and then I can just start moving and making any design I want to. And I want to go right to the edges. When I get to my corners, I'm going to make sure I stitch those well. Now on the back side, I just did a blue so that um, you would be able to see the design, but it wouldn't stand out because I really want it to be more the top that is the more spectacular. So I'm going to just stop right here so you can see some of it. See how it's just got some swirls, designs, and now that I've gotten some up here, I can really take those out. And I can actually take these two bottom ones out too because I just really want them about six inches apart when I um, pin. And these are much closer together than that. And so I am just going to continue. I'm going to free motion. On the back side, you can see the quilting on there. But I really think this variegated gold to brown will be real fun on this. And so um, I will be back when I get all of them done. I'm going to show them to you, um, show you how I'm going to put them together as sets. Now, sometimes when people do pot holders, they make a little loop. But I just really believe that anymore people don't hang up their pot holders. And so I don't think there's really a need for that. And so unless somebody asks me when I'm doing um, a pot holder for someone specifically, I don't add those little loops anymore because I think it's a, a waste of time and a waste of um, material. So um, I will be back in a little bit when I have all of these free motioned. Welcome back to Apple Cottage. Well, it's day two. I didn't finish them all. I had some other projects that I had to um, do. So I finished my pot holders today and they just turned out fantastic. They were so fun, easy, fast. And um, I just wanted to share how they turned out. I love using the two layers of all natural cotton batting. It makes them very thick. Um, it helps with them retaining the, the heat and they just turned out spectacular. And so um, some of these we're gonna go to the Fur Foundation. That is um, a group in um, locally in town and I'll put a link down there. So if that's something you'd like to support, I know that they would really appreciate. So I'm just gonna show you some of them that how they turned out. So this is the one with the, the stars and the moons. Um, so one will always have the background in the center and the other one will have the puppy dogs and then it's just opposite on the back side but i just love how you can um, see the stitching 
Um, I used gray to match this background color, but then on the front, um, I used different colors. Sometimes it was gray, but sometimes it was blues or browns or gold or red. Um, another set has the paisley. And I just love how it has the little line around so it's like a, a binding. On the front, it looks definitely like a binding, even though it's not. And they were just a fun project to make. I, I hear from a lot of people that they just hate putting binding on. And there are foots to put on your sewing machine that do make it easier. But um, if that's just something that you're uncomfortable with, try this project. And you can, um, once you have this mastered, you can use it on all kinds of things. Um, this one was the one with the flowers. And then I do have some gray ones. I thought these were perfect gifts for um, men because a lot of times they don't want the, the frilly colors and the everything. So these ones just have grays on the back. And there's a couple different kinds of gray that are on the back. And I just think they turned out fantastic. If you like my videos, um, please, um, Press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share with the world. And this is Sandy at Apple Cottage, and have a great weekend.